Hi everyone, I'm Daniel at QNAP and I'm here to talk about QVPN, which allows you to use your NAS as a VPN server. I'll also talk about what is VPN, our new QBelt protocol for connecting to VPN, and our new QVPN client app to make it easier to connect to VPN. And we'll give some practical instruction on how to connect uh, different platforms uh, to the VPN server. So uh, first, what is VPN? Well, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it allows you to remote into a local area network and appear to that network as if you were, you were locally in it. Also, when you access different websites on the internet, you will appear to those websites as if you are in the network that you remoted into. So this gives you privacy and anonymity because websites don't know where you are and therefore they don't know who you are. As far as they're concerned, you are where your VPN server is. Uh, VPN also offers a high degree of encryption to protect your data, which I'll get into uh, in a little bit. So to talk about uh, the difference that VPN makes, let's first talk about what it's like to use the internet without VPN. So let's say, for example, uh, you want to connect to Facebook. Uh, without VPN, uh, just through the internet, your computer connects to Facebook. Uh, your computer and Facebook are connected. Uh, Facebook will uh, probably know where you are because you're connected to Facebook and of course who you are. Um, as you connect to different uh, kinds of websites, um, most of the websites you connect to probably will have an encrypted connection, but some may not. And even uh, if the website has an encrypted connection, it's usually a much lower level of encryption than what you can have uh, with a VPN server. So what VPN offers you is a very high level of encryption to protect your data. We offer AES 256-bit encryption, so that's extremely hard to crack. And you get anonymity because uh, websites uh, don't know where you are or who you are. As far as they're concerned, you are where your VPN server is. So when you use VPN, first thing is uh, your device will create a, a, a VPN tunnel uh, to your VPN server, and that's extremely high level of encryption usually, so very hard to crack, protects your data. And then let's say that you want to access Facebook. Rather than send your request from your device directly to Facebook, you send your request through the VPN tunnel, and then your uh, VPN server sends those requests to Facebook. So as far as Facebook is concerned, its requests are coming from your VPN server. So as far as it is concerned, you are where your VPN server is, because everything it experiences is coming from you, actually comes from your server. So that's why you have anonymity, that's why you have privacy, and for uh, uh, many websites, uh, if they don't know where you are, they may not know who you are. So who might want to use VPN? Well, a traveling business person might choose to use VPN, and that's because when you travel, you might find yourself using public Wi-Fi. But public Wi-Fi is really not very secure. There could be people listening on to steal your sensitive information, and for a lot of uh, businesses, that could be a big problem. But when you use VPN, uh, all the data you send through the internet first goes through that encrypted VPN tunnel. So therefore, no one on your public Wi-Fi can see what you're doing or steal your information because everything first goes through that encrypted tunnel. Multinational corporations uh, might use uh, that encrypted VPN tunnel for file transfer to protect their sensitive data. Also, you can use VPN to connect two different offices together and have them function as if they were one giant local area network so that uh, all the people in office A, for example, could even use the local devices in office B. All the people in office B could appear as local in office A and use those local devices. So it's a, it makes a collaboration much more convenient, makes it easy, and it protects your data with that encrypted VPN tunnel. Sensitive data like maybe credit card information might sometimes be sent through that VPN tunnel to protect it. Also, uh, gamers and other people who like to go online and stream uh, might use VPN to get around regional restrictions. And that's because um, um, as far as those websites are concerned that you access, you are where your VPN server is. So let's say you're an American, you like streaming shows that are available in America, but you go on vacation to some other country. Maybe the show you'd like to stream is not available there. Well, if you use your NAS as a VPN server, uh, those streaming services will think you are where your NAS is. And then you could then get access to that content that may not be available to you when you're traveling. <clears throat> 
So VPN offers uh, the flexibility for employees to take advantage of the company's intranet or local area network over an existing internet connection. So that's basically remoting into a local area network and appearing as local in that network. VPN makes secure communication easier because it offers that heavily encrypted uh, VPN tunnel. Gives you privacy uh, because uh, websites don't know where you are. As far as they're concerned, you are where your VPN server is. And it can reduce uh, business travel costs because it can make it more feasible to use public Wi-Fi. And also you can get access to geo-blocked contents because you can appear to be uh, wherever your VPN server is. So that's what VPN can do. And our QVPN app allows you to use your NAS as a VPN server. So uh, this is what the QVPN app looks like. So over here, uh, you can see these are the different uh, users that are connected to VPN. It's a pretty clear topology here. Um, these are the different VPN protocols. And so you can see here that these three users are using the QBelt protocol. These two users use L2TP. You can see that all that VPN traffic is being funneled through this particular Ethernet port. So this NAS has four Ethernet ports, but all the VPN traffic is going through this port. So you can pretty clearly see what's going on just from the overview. It's also worth mentioning that uh, your NAS through this app can become a client of a different VPN server somewhere else. And over here, you can see these are the different VPN servers that you are a client of. So you can really see a lot from right here. Now this QVPN app is not new, but what's new is the topology has been made more clear. And also this QBelt protocol is new. So what's new about QBelt is it offers DT, uh, what's, uh, QBelt's new, but what's special about QBelt is it offers DTLS plus SSL plus AES 256-bit encryption. So that's a very high degree of encryption, extremely hard to crack. It's a new protocol, so that decreases the chances of it being detected. It should work on all your devices and it's easy to use. And one of the reasons it's easy to use is because we have a VPN client app to make it easier to connect. And I'll, I'll get into that later. So once you have a, a VPN server set up on one NAS, you can then join the other NAS to that VPN server as a VPN client. If one NAS is a client of the other NAS's VPN server, then you can do that in, uh, encrypted file transfer uh, through that heavily encrypted VPN tunnel. So this is great for remote replication when you have sensitive data that you want to make sure no one gets. So you want to use that uh, VPN tunnel. And you can do that using secure mount. So once you've made your NAS a client of the VPN server on the other NAS, then to do the remote mount, just go to file station, then click remote mount, click create, create remote mount. Then you need uh, the IP address of your VPN server. You need username, password, and then uh, what folder you're mounting. And the hardest part here is probably getting the IP address of your VPN server. So let me show you how to do that. So um, right here, let, let me go on my home NAS. This is my home NAS that I want to connect to. And you can see here, uh, my work NAS is the 670. And my work NAS, as you see, is a, a user connected through QBelt. So let me go to QBelt. So right now, I, uh, to look at the, to find the IP address of my VPN server, I just need to go to VPN client pool. And I see that this VPN server assigns a client pool from 10.7.0.2 to 10.7.0.254. And the reason it starts at dot two is because 10.7.0.1 is for the VPN server itself. So uh, what I need for the, uh, to connect to this VPN server is 10.7.0.1 would be the VPN server itself. So that's what I type in here, 10.7.0.1. So let me, uh, let me demo that right now. First, let me just show you um, from the overview on my work NAS, you can see over here that I am a client of this VPN server through QBelt, so this is my home NAS. Over here again in the overview view, you can see my, my work NAS is connected through QBelt. And that means on my work NAS, I can go to a file station and do the remote mount. Create remote mount, I'll choose SMB. So 10.7.0.1.
So now I've mounted uh, my web folder from my home NAS to my work NAS, and it's uh, mapped through that VPN tunnel. So anything I want to send through here, drag and drop through here, goes through that heavily encrypted VPN tunnel. So this is great for uh, remote replication, anything like that where you might have uh, sensitive information that you don't want anyone to get. But this only works if first you've made uh, your NAS a client of the VPN server on another NAS. So let's talk about how do you make your NAS a client of another VPN server. And this is not, and so this is the VPN client feature we're talking about now. So part of the, the QVPN app has the VPN client feature. And this VPN client feature is not only for connecting to another QNAP. This is actually for connecting to almost any kind of VPN server throughout the world. You can connect to other VPN servers through PPTP, through L2TP over IPsec, through OpenVPN, and these are all for connecting to just standard, even non-QNAP servers throughout the world. And you can also connect through QBelt, uh, but that's for connecting to a QNAP VPN server only. So to, so to do this, to become a client of another VPN server, just under VPN client, you can click on VPN connection profiles. Then from here, you can see these are all the VPN servers you are a, a client of, and you can just click add. And then you just need your basic information, uh, like server IP address, username, password, and pre-shared key is the same thing as shared secret. So that might be helpful to know it. Uh, with some servers, it might be called shared secret. And then you can also uh, set your VPN as your default gateway. And you can even make a failover VPN in case your VPN connection gets interrupted. Then once you have that set up where one NAS is a client of another NAS VPN server, you can then do remote replication uh, through that VPN tunnel to protect your data. So it's not too hard to set up a VPN server, uh, but the most common problems people have usually have to do with either uh, your firewall blocking you, so you want to make sure your firewall doesn't block you, um, and the other issue is port forwarding. For VPN to work, your router has to know uh, to forward that VPN traffic to your VPN server. So you need to, you need to set up port forwarding. Um, you can uh, do port forwarding manually, manually forwarding the ports that you want to use, or you can use a DMZ. DMZ is pretty easy, but it will forward all the ports uh, that aren't otherwise forwarded somewhere else. And that means you're forwarding a lot more ports than what you need, and forwarding a lot of ports can sometimes be a, a security concern. So I'd say uh, manually port forwarding is, the, is probably pre preferred for security, but there's just a few more steps involved, and people not used to this might find it to be just, just a little bit complicated uh, if you're not used to this. So what we have done is um, we have made this easier. Um, on our NAS, we have the MyQNAP Cloud app. I'm talking about the app, so I'm not talking about the website, but the MyQNAP Cloud app that runs on your QNAP. Click on that, and then you can click Auto Router Configuration. And then you can click Enable UPnP Port Forwarding. And this automatically forwards the ports that your NAS uses. But for this to work, you need to have a UPnP router. So if your router is not UPnP, this won't work, then you might have to manually port forward. But for a UPnP router, we have made port forwarding trivial. So um, this is kind of the best of both worlds because um, it's super easy, even easier than, than the DMZ. But it's not just forwarding all the ports, it's more secure because it's just forwarding the ports that your NAS is using. And you can even choose which of those ports you want to forward. So this trivializes port forwarding. And port forwarding is usually the hardest part about setting up a VPN. So once you have uh, your NAS set up as a VPN server, then you want to connect your client devices uh, to your NAS. So there are two main ways to do this. Uh, one is that your client devices uh, should have an operating system, like maybe it's a computer running Windows. And most operating systems have a built-in way to connect to a VPN server. The other option is to use the QVPN client app to connect to your QNAP VPN server. So I'll go, go over both. But first, for Windows, uh, you can click the Start menu, then click, then click Settings, uh, choose Network and Internet, choose VPN, then add a VPN connection, select the VPN type for PPTP, um, only entering the credentials is required, for L2TP, uh, one more setting of pre-shared key is required. And pre-shared key is the same thing as shared secret. That might be helpful to know. 
for Mac OS. You can go to System Preferences, then Network, and then click on this little plus sign over here. Then interface should be VPN, type L2TP over IPsec, then click Authentication Settings. Then the password of your NAS is what you enter here, and a shared secret here is the same thing as pre-shared key. For Android, you can go to Settings, you can go to Wireless and Network, choose a VPN, add Network, then uh, select the VPN type. For L2TP, you must insert the IPsec uh, pre-shared uh, key, which is the same as shared secret. Then insert, insert the credentials uh, when you connect. For iOS, you can go to Settings, then click VPN, Add VPN Configuration. Uh, the type should be L2TP, and then insert the credentials and the secret, which is the same thing as shared secret or pre-shared key. Now your other option is to use our QVPN client app. And the QVPN app can search your subnet for QNAP NAS. Um, it can use uh, this VPN connection to access other NAS. And you can also uh, use, uh, you can also create the next VPN tunnel uh, using your original VPN connection. So it's a convenient way to get a lot of different devices connected to your QNAP VPN server. So this is what it looks like on Windows. The client app looks like on Windows. This is what it looks like on Mac. This is what it looks like on Android. And this is what it looks like on iOS. You can just download this from our website. It's uh, pretty simple. And let me demo this for you though. So on my Mac, this is what my uh, QVPN client app looks like. So this is my, uh, this is my VPN server at home. So it's my save profile. I can just click there to connect. Um, if I wanted to add a new VP VPN connection, I could either discover NAS on my subnet or I could add uh, manually. So you, you just need to insert the basic information and choose either QBelt or L2TP. Also, you can click on MyQNAP Cloud and you would first need to log in. Uh, but since I'm already logged in, I can see what I have preset up for a VPN connection. So this is just kind of an easier way of setting up that VPN connection on your device once you've logged into my QNAP Cloud. And so once you have uh, your devices um, connected to your NAS and your NAS is a VPN server, then you can make your NAS a client of other VPN servers th throughout the world. And this way, um, through your NAS, um, all your devices can connect to other VPN servers. So it's very convenient, very easy. And this makes the, the QNAP NAS a great choice uh, for VPN. So I hope this helps. I hope you can see that we have some, some great tools for using your NAS as a VPN server. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, we'll be here for a little bit to answer them. Thank you for watching.